Hey everybody, it's Tori from Avalon Enchanted. You might have been expecting Cindy this week. She's got a lot going on. Um, so you got me. Um, if you're seeing this, this means that you're seeing our encore presentation um, of our Ascended Illuminations reading this week. Um, as you know, we actually um, record our readings onto Zoom and then we put it up on our page under Tori McNally on YouTube. Usually, as you know, when we actually, uh, when we put it up to YouTube, there's more content. Um, so if you're going to be catching this as a replay, it's always good to catch the replay from YouTube. FYI, sometimes there might be um, last minute discounts. Sometimes there might be some different announcements that um, we might not necessarily roll out early on, um, on Facebook. So uh, keep that in the in the back of your mind. If you're going to be catching it, catch it as um, a replay. Usually it's the next day um, on, on YouTube. It's definitely worth your while. Right now we have a great um, referral program that we just rolled out that runs now through the end of the year. Um, if you refer two people to us, who actually sign up and, and have a reading or a healing or attend a class or um, an event, then you're gonna be receiving a free uh, 30 minute either reading or healing of your choice. So, and you can do your reading, your free reading or healing either remotely or in person. Um, the people who um, purchase the reading or the healing um, or um, an event or class, can purchase it um, for remote access or for an in-person access, depending upon what's going on. Uh, you just need to use your um, free 30-minute healing or reading before January 31st. So um, we're going to come back to some more information. Right, I already know right now we're just in the process of going to be getting online with uh, Facebook. Um, there's a lot to talk about. And um, there's a lot to talk about with what's going on, not only around the world, but also globally, um, astrally, and so on, which I definitely want to cover. So there have been some things I've definitely felt, some things I've definitely experienced um, that I do want to kind of get people um, up to speed on. So this is going to be a, a good opportunity to... Um, to really get an idea of what's going on um i'm going to bring the people in like i said shortly um we have we have some great things coming up for those of you that might uh, be in the rhode island area we um participate in because we have a small studio in wickford we participate in the wickford wicked week and a half um so that all starts come very soon and we're actually, throughout the entire month of October, we have lots of different events going on. Everything from an Oktoberfest to, gosh, a, a harbor fire, um, to a sip and stroll, to, um, my God, a horribles parade, um, you name it, and it's, it's happening. So, um, I posted on our Facebook page, um, our schedule, our calendar. We have a, a tea and table tipping night. We have um, a, a table tipping night coming up tomorrow night where we still have some space. Cindy's gonna be um, uh, teaching, uh, or I should say host, hosting her Violet Flame Healing Circle. And I also am gonna be working with Muhammad. For those of you that know that I do a lot with ancient Egyptian energy. I'm going to be um, hosting with Muhammad a very, very special um, um, uh, essential oils and incense of ancient Egypt coming up this Sunday on Zoom. So, and also the free class that we're also hosting on Zoom on the 16th, which is the origins of Halloween. So we still have space available in all of those things, and we hope you'll join us. Um, we also hope that you'll check out Wickford and... Um, Enjoy Wickford in the fall. It's absolutely beautiful. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And like I said, there's some things I want to share with you later on. 
after we hop off of the um, Facebook feed. Um, yeah. After we hop off the Facebook feed, because there's there's some interesting stuff. So um, I do hope everybody is doing well. Um, the way that this works, which I will um, be um, uh, introducing to you is that there's three cards that I've selected from my um, Ascended Masters deck. Um, this is A, this is A, and this is White Buffalo Calf Woman, okay? A, White Buffalo, oops, Calf Woman, all right? And her message is Peace Offerings. <clears throat> I have B, which is uh, Horus, ancient Egyptian, Horus. And it is, you are seeing this situation accurately. And then I have C, um, which is Krishna. And it's find the blessing in your current situation. So you basically select whichever one you are most uh, drawn to. I do a reading for each. And then... That is your reading for this week. Basically talking about the different energies that are coming up, talking about some of the other stuff that's coming up um, in the next couple of weeks, um, especially people in the United States. I think you probably understand what I'm talking about. A lot to talk about. Um, and I'm really excited to share with you, which I'll share afterwards, a whole brand new class that uh, Muhammad and I are going to be doing for November. So that's going to be something that we are really super excited about. And if you are someone that likes to uh, work with essential oils, you like to work with herbs, um, you might be an herbalist, um, or you might be really um, interested in ancient Egyptian culture, then this is going to be something that might be up your alley. And I think it's going to be great. So I'm going to go ahead and start bringing in um, Facebook. So bear with me for just a few moments. I just need to reduce that. And I need to, I know, I talk to myself. I'm sorry. It's one of those things where there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot going on. Uh, I want to switch to Avalon Enchanted. And let's see. And three through ten, nine. Would help if I could spell. A, B, or C. All right. Get this started. Looks like Facebook may have done an update. So bear with me. It says the browser is not letting me do this. Oh, I know why. Duh. I know why. Gotta love all of this wonderful um, stuff that we have going on in terms of all the tech. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No, nope, I don't want it to do it this way.
So we're going to wait for some people to hop in. Okay. So I just need to share this. Let some people join in. And I want to grab the link. Hello, 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 everybody. Hope everybody is doing well this lovely evening. If you're catching this as a replay, please do hashtag replay. Um, what I want to say is that if you are going to be catching this as a replay, it's best to catch it when it goes to YouTube because we actually add a lot more content on our YouTube when we record this. So there's some things that we're going to be talking about uh, after the Facebook feed. There's some things that we've also talked a little bit about before the Facebook feed. So you're going to want to um, catch things um, through our um, YouTube page is under Tori McNally. And um, that's where we might add in discounts. That's where we might add in announcements where maybe things that we don't necessarily take all the wrappings off of things um, on Facebook. We might pre-launch them um, through through our YouTube feed. So that's something to kind of know about in the back of your mind. All right. And next. And I want to share that here and here and here. And okay. We'll give it one more second. But I hope everybody is doing well. For those that saw um, what I had posted. I just went online a few moments before um, I hopped on and I pulled out my Ascended Masters deck. And um, basically what I did was, um, what I did was select three cards through shuffling. I took the top card uh, after shuffling and I got a white Buffalo Calf Woman Okay, white buffalo calf woman, and this is A, and her, her, um, um, I guess you could say, um, um, suggestion is peace offering. Okay, then B, Horus, you are seeing the situation accurately. So this is B, okay, and then C is Krishna, find the blessing in your current situation. Find the blessing in your current situation. So you select either A, B, or C. So you select either White Buffalo Calf Woman, Horus, or Krishna. Uh, and whichever one you're drawn to, uh, I do a reading for each. And that ultimately is your reading this for this particular week. We do this uh, usually on Thursdays. And it goes, this energy forecast reading goes from Thursday to the next Wednesday, okay? We have a lot going on. So I do wanna talk a little bit about that stuff and get people kind of ramped up for some of the stuff going on. Um, there's a lot going on, not just in October, there's a lot going on in November and there's a lot going on worldwide that I also wanna address. So some of it I'm gonna be addressing here on Facebook. Some of it you're gonna have to watch YouTube because like I said, we do add in extra content and um, it's one of those things where um, it gives you the opportunity to be in the know. How about that? To be in the know. Hi, Jessica. How are you this evening? So I'm just pulling out my cards and I'm giving them a good shuffle shuffle. So um, I don't know if people are aware, but if you are in upper no, northern New England, then you're going to be treated to an amazing light show um, tonight and tomorrow night, courtesy of uh, the sun. <laughs> um, there have been some so large solar flares facing um, the, the Earth planet, and that has caused a lot of 
uh, charged energy to go into the atmosphere, which in turn is creating um, the aurora borealis. So you are treated to some special shows. Um, I posted on my Facebook page under Tori McNally, uh, a viewing chart of where you're likely to potentially see it and how you're potentially likely to see it, okay? So that's something that you might wanna check out. Um, I'm here in Rhode Island, so it says that I should be able to potentially see it through my camera on my phone, we will see. Um, I, if you're further north above Boston, then you're gonna be able to see it to the naked eye. And if you're really up close toward Canada border and up north, then you guys are darn lucky. That's all I'm gonna say. You guys are darn lucky. Cause it's been on one of my lists to, to see the Northern, to the Northern lights. Um, I know every once in a while, hey Pamela, I find myself getting up in the middle of the night and staring out the window and kind of seeing what's going on. I did it last night and needless to say, I wasn't disappointed. I didn't see the Northern Lights. However, I did see what was not a plane because it wasn't blinking, but it was the size of a plane. It did a weird loopy thing and then it disappeared. And then about maybe two seconds later, there was a blue flash um, in, I guess, kind of to the left of, of where it kind of went into this cloud. So it's really weird. All of a sudden I'm like seeing all of this stuff or I'm, maybe I'm just now paying attention to it. I don't know. But, um, for those of you that may not have known, I went to a sound bath, um, uh, full moon sound bath at Beaver Tail, which is a state park here in Rhode Island on this island that I live on, on Jamestown. And, um, beautiful beautiful it's it's set on a point with a lighthouse and on one side of the point you have the sunset on the west on the east side you have the moon rising and so we're staring up at the sky and we're seeing some really interesting interesting lights that are different colors that are in different patterns that break up that disappear and things like that so um yeah I'm kind of excited about it. So we're going to start with A, which is white calf buffalo woman. Okay, A, white calf buffalo woman. Let's see what white calf buffalo woman has to say besides um, peace offering. So as I was saying um, on the on the YouTube feed, um, which will be going up shortly to YouTube. I um, want to get people into um, the uh, routine, if they're going to be catching this as a replay, to catch it on our YouTube page under Tori McNally, because we add in more stuff um, on that particular feed. So something to think about, um, sometimes discounts, sometimes extra readings, sometimes just things that are going on that are important to share, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's see what we got. Well, um, if you've chosen A, peace offering, white calf buffalo woman, there are going to be some things that are going to be happening that you may find uh, are going to be a little bit um, tumultuous, okay? That's the word I'm specifically hearing is tumultuous. Uh, we have the judgment card, which to me is always the... Um, uh, come to Jesus card. And, and, you know, unfortunately, with everything that's been going on with the weather and the hurricane, then turning into tropical storm, to me, this is almost something that's screaming, like, what's going on, especially down in Georgia, um, Florida, Georgia, um, North, South Carolina, um, Tennessee, Kentucky. Um, this is something that is, is, is what's coming to my mind. So there are going to be some more of those, I feel, um, more of those storms that might be popping up um, that are going to be harder and harder um, to, to um, get through. Not going to lie. Just going to put it out there. We do have a tower moment coming. If you've chosen A, we do have a tower moment which means that that is a shakeup. So there may be some things that maybe you're focusing on that are not coming to fruition because you are either, um, it's just not the right time or it's not the right situation. Um, 
and you're not necessarily looking at what you need to be looking at. Okay. Um, you're going to find that there's going to be a little bit of, usually when I get the, the moon card, it means that you're not seeing the full picture. So you're going to maybe feel like you need a plan in order to be able to go through things. But uh, honestly, you're going to find that this, whatever plan potentially you might make is going to be tossed right out the window. And it, it's going to be one of those things where you're really going to have to go with the flow. Okay. Um, there's a lot of changes that are coming up. You know, we have the Ace of Cups, which is about new beginnings, new opportunities coming in, which is always great, but that's more so on the emotional end. So it could very well be that there are things that maybe we've been holding on to or decisions that we've been holding on to for too long that we know we need to make changes on that we don't want to do. Um, and the universe is doing it for us. If I pull another card, I got the King of Cups. So this is this is somebody that needs to kind of go with the flow, basically. He's somebody that kind of goes with the flow. Uh, there really is the need to keep on looking forward during this week, especially with um, the dark moon, especially with the um, second moon, two moons that we have kind of orbiting Earth right now. Um, and we also have, hey, Donna, we also have... Um, we also have some things that you're going to find yourself needing to kind of extricate yourself out of. You know, you may find that there's just too much going on and you, need, and you might need to simplify some things. So um, as I usually say, the um, Eight of Cups is the screw it, I'm out of here card. And, and that may very well be something that is needed in order to give you the opportunity to bring in this new opportunity, new beginning, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, I see that there is you know, forward movement, looking ahead, looking for what's coming in, waiting for your ship to come in, you know, and the world is your oyster. So there's a lot of, of opportunity, but we just need to kind of maybe simplify some of the things that we got going on. If I pull another card, I got um, the six of cups, which is all about maybe reminiscing of the past. What I'm going to say is though, that you may find that you really need to kind of not necessarily get sucked into the past, okay? Uh, here's the Knight of Pentacles, which for me is a moving card. So to me, this is, um, if, if it feels that, you know, this forward movement is so important. And if you feel like you need to make changes, it talks about, you know, white calf buffalo woman or white buffalo calf woman is talking about peace offerings. So there may be some things that you might need to literally make peace offerings with yourself in order to move on. It might very well be making peace offerings with other people get to give you the opportunity, the energy, the bandwidth, the space to be able to move on to the next thing that is right for you. Okay. So that's kind of where we're coming in um, for people for A. All right. Um, Again, peace offering, white buffalo calf woman. She's been popping up a lot. I mean, a lot lately. Um, let me see if I can find any information on her. Let me put my glasses on. You know, it's October and it's freaking warm. And it's like muggy warm. And it's just annoying. I'm just going to say that. Um, I know that may sound kind of bratty, but I feel like I'm melting. <laughs> So um, the peace offering card, all right? This card heralds the resolution of an argument or a misunderstanding. Those involved in the situation are ready to forgive and forget, be open to seeing the other person's point of view and soften any hard feelings. Also allow the compassion in the situation. Love's healing power ensures that everyone needs are met harmoniously. Leave the details about how this situation will be resolved to the infinite wisdom of spirit. Again, go with the flow. And this is talking about um, being willing to forgive, having compassion for everyone involved in the situation, including yourself. Also accept another's apology and see the humor in, situ in situations. To me, this is giving ourselves the permission, giving ourselves the, the space to be able to move on, to be able to forgive ourselves as well as other people if we need to, 
because if we keep on holding on to that, we're holding on to something potentially that we don't need to be carrying. Um, it, it only kind of prevents us from being able to um, basically uh, connect with other energy that we want to come in. So that's something to keep in mind. So A, yeah, there are going to be some fiery moments. Yeah, there is the judgment. Um, yeah, there are going to be some things where you do need to go with the flow. Um, it's in your best interest. Um, keep looking forward and keep moving forward. Um, the future is bright, um, but you got to be able to see it for what it is and not necessarily focus on what what's what's not. OK, so keep that in mind. So that is for our first reading A. Let's take a look at our second reading B, which is Horus. You are seeing the situation accurately. Let's see what that's all about. OK, let me just pick up these cards real quick. I will show you the Horus card. The Horus card. And I am going to do another shuffle. So while I am talking about that, I'm just going to kind of go through some things. We still have, um, I bet because I'm <laughs> very possibly, you know, very, very possibly. Sometimes people will feel like they're drawn to both, and that's okay. Um we still have space available in tomorrow night's table tipping in studio. So if you're interested in table tipping mediumship, wanting to figure out what it is and and and, and explore it, um, we're going to be having it tomorrow night in the studio. Um, I am posting another Egyptian Zoom, um, which I'm really excited about with my friend Mohammed. He is an Egyptologist that's actually based in Luxor, Egypt. And we are doing a class on essential oils and incense of ancient Egypt and how um, they were made and how they the different temples were were so important to the, pro, the, the produce, I should say, the, the production of the essential oils that were used, of the incense that was used um, for not only the temples, but also for the tombs, for the funerary acts and so on and so on and so on so there's still space available for that um i'm also doing a free class on uh zoom on the 16th of this month at seven o'clock and that is on the origins of halloween so if you are interested in getting an idea of what the true essence of halloween is and how it came about this is a good opportunity to give you yourself um, a little bit of a of a walk down um, the historic lane in order to kind of see what it's like. We will also combine a meditation in order to also connect um, with some of that stuff as well. Um, but, uh, Cindy's also going to be hosting her Violet Flame Healing Circle on the 21st. And I'm really excited about this one. On the 25th, we're doing a Victorian tea and table tipping in studio um, on Friday the 25th. Um, yeah, and we're also planning on being open in Wickford, um, more so on weekends. I know Cindy will be in studio on the 6th. Um, I'm actually going to be yodeling in the woods for the weekend of the 12th and the 13th, so Cindy plans to be in studio then. Um, we're going to be around for Harbor Fire. I will be in Wickford on the 19th and Cindy's going to be on the 20th. And then we are basically both there. Uh, looks like the 26th and the 27th. And then it's Halloween. Now we also have to layer all of the wonderful fun Halloween events that the village has because there's a lot going on that you don't want to miss. Everything from a haunted spooky um, historical tour to a really amazing Horribles Parade, to an Oktoberfest. So if you are interested in any of the events in the village, Wickford Village, which is a small historic village in North Kingstown, Rhode Island, just before you get to Jamestown, uh, which is on the way to Newport, then you may want to check out I Love Wickford Village 
um, on Facebook and you're going to be able to see all the details. I've posted some details about some of the things that are going on there. So check it out. It's definitely a lot of fun. Um, we have a sip and stroll, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So let's see what Horace has to say. <sighs> so how many of you have been feeling like everything has just been like speeding up lately? It, it's just been bonkers in terms of how fast things have been going. Um, it, it's like, I cannot believe it's already, well, um, the beginning of October. And it, it's just one of those things where you know, we're going to blink and all of a sudden it's going to be into the, into the holidays. And, and it's just, it's just crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. So let's see what we got for B. Horace, the, the, you are seeing the, the situation accurately. All right. We do have some stuff going on that maybe we've been trying to dragging our feet on, or potentially maybe we need to, okay. Okay. Um, or potentially maybe we need to um, um, take a step back from, but, you know, I, I feel like there are going to be some moments that you are going to need to really make sure that you're staying in balance. Here's the, the, um, the justice card, which is all about not only balance, but it's also all about um, um, legal stuff, you know, so if there's something legal going on with you, whether it be signing a contract, whether it be, um, something bigger. The other thing to mention about the justice card is that if you notice in the justice card there, the the uh, figure has a sword in his hand. And, and so it's kind of like one of those things where you may find that you might have to literally use that sword to either cut your, uh, to either cut yourself free of something or, or to protect yourself. And I almost feel like there's a little bit of both going on. Okay. Um, we do have a tower moment in the emotional house which means that there are going to be some moments where you feel like you're just out of control. You're going to be, have some moments where you feel like things are not going your way. You're going to have some moments where you feel like, honestly, it's the five of pentacles, um, which is usually a lost card. So to me, this could very well be tied in with that. Um, but I also feel like you have the ability to manifest. You have the ability to um change your situation you know yes the situation potentially according to horace is accurate however uh, um we have free will we have the ability to manifest and we have the ability to change things and i feel like this is going to be a week where you are focusing on really being careful about your self-talk you're being very careful about your thoughts in order to help you work through this. We have the high priestess card. She is very magical. You have this ability. Everyone has this ability. It, it's just sometimes we forget that we have it or sometimes we're just not used to using it and that's okay. But I really encourage people to um, give themselves the credit and to really focus on, on, on how they're speaking to themselves and what they're saying because written word thought, spoken word is all energy going out to the universe. Okay. If I pull another card, I got the wheel of fortune. All right. And it's interesting because I feel like I want to put this with the five of, of pentacles. Okay. So to me, this is something that is, um, I'm gonna pull another card. Yeah. The star all about hope. Okay. So the star card is actually a really great card. It's about, we have to keep the hope. We have to keep the belief that we are going to work through this and stay as positive as we can. But we also have to be kind of laser focused, allowing ourselves to get through this, to get through whatever this cycle is and allow us to get into this new cycle, which potentially is going to give us, it's going to be supportive. It's going to give us the opportunity to um, not necessarily walk this path alone. And there may be some things that maybe you're not necessarily fully on board with, but in the same token, uh, focus on what you have. Keep moving forward, but focus on what you have. Um, you are kind of your, your, if we keep everything in check and we keep on allowing ourselves to stay grounded and anchored and moving ahead, 
then we're going to get through this week a lot easier, a lot better, and in much better shape. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say for um, B. I'm going to just look at the bottom of the deck because I'm being told to. Oh, okay. So that we got the four of pentacles, which is a great card. So that means that, you know, you may find that this week may be a little bit turbulent for you, but it's going to, it's going to work itself out and you are going to find that things are going to get better. Just keep having that faith and keep on going with the flow. Again, stay in the balance, stay grounded and anchored. And don't forget, you might be using this sword to potentially cut your uh, cut away something that's either not working for you, whether it be unfortunately people or situations. You may find that you might need to sever those cords this week, or you might even know that you need to do it, but this week is the week to do it. All right, so just keep that in mind. So let's take a look at C, which is Krishna, and which is find the blessing in your situation, okay? And I just want to quickly, before I move on to Horace, I just want to quickly read, uh, I'm sorry, before I move on to Krishna, I just want to quickly read um, Horace, a little bit more detail about Horace. So for those of you who know, I am very much um, tied in with the Egyptian ancient magic. So Horace is actually the son of um uh isis and osiris okay isis and osiris and um he is uh, a very powerful powerful um egyptian um deity and um he comes in as a as a uh human body with a falcon head. So let's read a little bit about him. So trust your feelings about the situation because they are accurate and valid. Let go of your self-doubt, even in the face of others' opinions. Your spiritual sensitivity has helped you see the truth. Although it may be easier to go along with the crowd or to shrink into apathy, you're called upon to take a decisive action. You already know what to, what to do. Even if people aren't supporting you, you know that spirit is. Other people will soon come around to um, to your point of view. In the meantime, assume the leadership role. Um, additional meanings for this. Hey, Sandy, are trust in your intuition and your gut feelings. Um, ignore critics and naysayers or skeptics. Avoid situations or relationships that don't feel right. And only you know what is correct. So Horus is the Egyptian falcon-headed uh, sky god and uh, whose parents were Osiris and Isis. He's conceived after his mother brought his father back from the dead while the, um, um, while the help of the sun god, or I should say with the help of the sun god Ra, one of Horus's eyes was injured during a battle um, of revenge out of his father's death. And this is why Horus is represented with one large and a clear seeing eye. You can call upon Horus for help with spiritual or physical sight, including insight into the truth about a situation. So um, I think that that's definitely very, very telling. Um, all right, so Krishna, like I said, this is C, Krishna C, okay? Uh, find the blessing in your, in your current situation, um, Krishna. So let me read about that one real quick. All okay. right. Okay, so every situation offers opportunity to grow and learn. When we cur oh, when we yeah, when we curse a situation, we block its energy flow, and things fester and get worse. Um, in contrast, as you recognize the blessings within your current situation, supportive and healing energy flows towards you. This card comes to you because there's an unrecognized blessing within your current situation. It could be something that you've learned or gained, for example. Recognize the blessing to accelerate the healing and the manifestation that's trying to come to you. Um, if we look at some additional meanings that deal with this, we're looking at instead of worrying, pray and use positive affirmations. Know that everything is divine and perfect or uh, in imperfect order. The situation is resolving itself perfectly. You heal through the power of gratitude. And that reminds me, um, the free class that we're going to be having on Zoom in November is, um, when is it? I'm looking at my calendar. That's why I'm kind of spacing out. 
I want to say it is like the first full week of November. What are those evenings on Zoom? Um, it is a it's a, a meditation um, um, event that's going to be focusing on gratitude and the angels and manifestation. So um, definitely sign up for that through Eventbrite, even though it's free, sign up for it um, and join us on Zoom. You can join us again on Zoom for our free class, like I said, with um, the origins of Halloween. Um, if you attended the free class on crystals that we did for um, September, that was a fun class and we got a lot of really cool stuff that we talked about. Um, really, really fun. So Krishna is the eighth incarnation of Vishnu, who is one of the three Hindu gods who oversees and protects Earth and her inhabitants. He... Um, he is a messenger of joy, happiness, romantic love, and spiritual teachings such as uh, Bhagavad Gita, which is a text of Krishna's dialogues. Krishna brings blessings to whomever calls upon him. All right, let's see what Krishna has to say. But yeah, I'm really excited. The table tipping that we're doing, we're doing two table tippings in studio in Wickford uh, this month. One tomorrow night where there's space available. And then the one on the 25th, which is actually a Victorian tea and table tipping, because believe it or not, table tipping is something that was done um, uh, throughout Victorian times to connect with uh, people's loved ones that had crossed over on the battlefields throughout um, uh, the Civil War and World War One. So um, it's something that is is very interesting is very healing and very therapeutic we do it in such a way where we only allow that that of the brightest and the whitest of light that's healing and helping we have the archangels anchoring our space we also have gatekeepers who are um uh, very helpful and have a lot of power including the likes of archangel michael metatron um mother mary um Sekhmet, um Merlin, who cloaks the space, etc. So definitely a, a good, um, a good. It's a good. It's a. It's a really interesting experience. So, one more shuffle, and then I am going to see what we got. It's interesting. We've got some of the same cards that came up before, which I always find interesting, even as I shuffle multiple times. It's always amazing what pops in. All right, let's see what we got. So again, find the blessing in your current situation. All right, so if you've, if you've chosen this card, it could very well be the fact that there has been um, something that potentially has ended. Okay, the death card does not mean someone's dropping dead. Usually it's something has come to an end. Um, so it could very well have been a situation that may have been turbulent that um, needed to come to an end. If I pull another card, I got the three of cups, which is also about celebration. Ahead of us is the wheel of fortune. So again, cycles and something ending, but something new beginning. You may find that it's going to be one of those things where you are kind of slogging through things trying to find your way but you have help you have support don't be afraid to to lean on that support um structure that you have okay um again focus on the thought patterns of staying positive focus on the thought pause of uh, the thought patterns that are also moving forward okay um you don't allow yourself to fall into this um, four of cups um, phase where this guy has three perfectly good cups down here, but he's focusing on what he can't have. He's focusing on what's out of reach. Okay. And it's like you're spending, don't spend all that energy on focusing on what potentially is not coming to fruition. Uh, it may very well be that it's not coming to fruition period, or it could just not be coming in now. All right. That's something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Um, oh, okay. So we have the Ace of Cups, 
We also have the Ace of Swords. So this is something that is, is actually really, really good. Um, you may very well find that you've been feeling kind of stuck. You've been feeling out of balance. You've been feeling like you've been literally carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. And there's movement ahead. There's literally in the emotional house, this guy who's looking ahead and seeing what his next moves are. Where is he going from here? All right. So my point is, it could very well be that what you've been through may have definitely been quite the challenge. Um, but Krishna is coming forward to say, you know what? These challenges were, well, uh, very challenging. But hey, Jamie, but there's something around the corner for you that's great. All right. We got the nine of pentacles, which is all about having abundance and um, having confidence and so on. We have the we have the nine of cups, which is happiness and, and just being in a really good place. We have the high priestess, which, again, is all about being in balance and knowing that you have the ability to affect your situation. So focus on on affecting your situation in a positive way. All right. Um, we may find ourselves constantly looking at rehashing things that have happened in the past that um, maybe we didn't handle situations quite as well as we thought we did or we would have liked to have happened. Um, forgive yourself on that. Let it go. It's not going to help you rehashing something that doesn't need rehashing. You're only spinning your wheels and you're using time and energy on something that's happened in the past that is not gonna is not gonna change, if that makes sense, all right? Um, but give yourself the permission, give yourself the grace, give yourself the opportunity to take flight, to spread your wings. Use this as an opportunity to Find a new beginning, a new chapter, a new opportunity. Again, don't beat yourself up over something that's not coming in or not coming in at this time. Give yourself time. You have all the tools. You have the ability. All right. You have the ability. It's just one of those things where you just got to kind of have faith. Uh, I don't want to say fake it till you make it because you know a lot more than you think you do. Okay. Um, but, you know, look at this. Look at this. Aces. Aces. Ace of Cups, Ace of Swords. Swords are very intellectual, okay? Cups are emotional. So you're going to find that there's a huge shift in the emotional well-being of yourself by giving yourself the permission to move forward, by giving yourself the permission to say, okay, I'm going to start this new chapter um, and taking it step by step. Again, looking ahead, looking for the future, moving forward, not getting distracted, okay? And that is something that I feel is really, really important. The energy that's coming in, especially with, um, well, I'm just going to say it. The energy that's coming in with this, with this moon, uh, with this moon, this double moon, um, the Halloween portal, et cetera, um, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of distractions. So, stay on target, stay on track. Don't psych yourself out. You know, you're going to find that you're going to be okay. You're going to find that things happen for the right reasons. You're going to find that even though it may very well be something that completely sucked, you got this. All right. And I feel like that is something that you really need to know. Um, yes, it's important to stay in touch with your emotions. Yes, it's important to feel all the emotions in order to um, help with the healing process. But you also need to keep this momentum moving forward. Okay. And that is where we are with, with C. So as I've been saying, that is the reading for A, B, and C. Uh, again, if you are catching this um, or if you caught it in the middle, um, one of the things I am, am really focusing on doing is putting the replay onto our YouTube page under Tori McDowell. Okay. Uh, so it should appear tomorrow and we add in more content. We add in more information that maybe we don't necessarily, uh, share on the Facebook live, but you 
have access to it on the YouTube um, recording, okay? Because I record this on Zoom and I send it up to, to YouTube. So um, there are, like I said, there's a lot of really cool things that are going on in the village. Um, if you have the opportunity to come to Wickford Village, you're not going to be, you're not going to be um, upset. You're going to be really pleased. It's fun. It's all decked out in, in, um, you know, it's all decked out in pumpkins and mums and corn stalks and, and all sorts of cool things. There's free activities for the kids. Um, the shops are open in, on some of the evenings, like with the Harbor Fire, like with the Sip and Stroll, um, like with, um, what else? Um, the, the parade um, that's for families. Um, so there's a little bit of something for everybody. It's great people watching. I'm telling you, it's great people watching. Um, if you like to take a lot of pictures, um, this is a good one to definitely come and, and uh, uh, check out. Um, so our plan is to be open, if not both weekend days, at least one weekend day each weekend uh, throughout October um and hopefully through november and december um obviously you know there's certain things that are going on that you know we don't always have a say in uh you know good things like kids get sick um stuff comes up where sometimes we have to kind of say okay we need to kind of change things but you know pe people just need to know that you can always reach out to us through facebook or Instagram, or the website, avalonenchanted.com, or um, what else? Um, any of our social media. So if you want to make an appointment, we can definitely schedule something for you, whether it be an evening, whether it be a weekend, um, whether it be, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work to make it work for you, ultimately. Um, again, we just recently launched our... Um, um appreciation program um so if you refer two individuals to us that successfully um either purchase a reading purchase a healing um attend an event um i don't know sign up for a program if you get two people that do that then we are gifting you with a complimentary 30 minute tarot reading or healing or energy healing of your choice. Okay. Which you can use anytime between now and the end of January. So this referral program actually runs now through the end of December. Um, it's just our way of saying thank you as we're going into the holidays. Let's face it. You know, the holidays are all about gratitude. And uh, that's something that we wanted to try and bring in and start to cultivate. Um, so we are really grateful for all of the people who have supported us over the years. Um, and we are really grateful for the people that we are, um, you know, look forward to meeting, you know. Um, when we moved to Wickford, um, we kind of went in with um, just kind of an open book in terms of, okay, what can we do? How can we make a difference? And um, how can we become involved in the community? How can we also help more people either learn to open up or either learn to um, find the best out of themselves? Um, etc. So we have this referral program to help people as a way of saying thank you for that. And we do find that we have some people that have been so helpful that um, we're actually going to be reaching out to some people um, to let them know that we, we've been, um, that their, their kind words through their friends or family, etc. have made a difference. And that we just want to say thank you. Um, to them. So um, that's a great way of getting, like I said, a free reading or free um, uh, energy healing um, as our way of saying thank you. It can be used either remotely or in person. Either is fine. Um, so um, 
what else? Oh, I know. I was actually just doing a little bit of channeling today, and I wanted just to kind of touch base with you on some of the notes that I received. Uh, when I actually write stuff, when I channel, I try and write stuff down because I don't always remember it. I'm not going to lie. It kind of goes in one ear and out the other when I hear it. But, you know, we just we just have a lot going on that I feel is really going to affect us now through probably the end of the year. And I know I've done a couple of um, readings to get us through, at least through the election series, at the election season. I've also done a couple of, of readings on YouTube, one of the cats, to, that we've also uh, done to kind of help get us through the end of the year. So um, what I'm gonna say is just be aware of the energy that's coming in, be aware of the energy that's around you. Um, there's, um, we're in the new moon of Libra and Libra is funny because I have a Libra here at home and they're all about everything being fair, balanced, equal, and even. Okay. So Libra is, is all about that. So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, we've had a solar eclipse. We have, like I said earlier, we have the Aurora Borealis, which has been, um, which has been, uh, very, very active over the last couple months. And we're going to have quite a show, uh, coming up tonight, tomorrow night, and possibly the next night after that. Um, so with that being said, um, that energy, especially people who are open, who are in tune, who are, empathic are going to feel that they may feel these energy bursts they may feel um they may feel this this i'm going to say discombobulation so that's why it's really important to make sure that you're really focusing on staying anchored and grounded and aware you're using your discernment and what i'm also hearing is don't be baited by people um don't be baited by the collective. Don't be baited by what other people are saying. Follow your own path. Follow your own journey, okay? Um, there's also a real need to not be reactionary um, during this energy season. You know, be calm, be still, be collected. Um, stay focused, stay on your mission. Stay on your goal, all right? Um, the image that I was getting was almost like a Phoenix rising. So we literally had, um, from what I saw the, the rising of the Phoenix coming up and it could very well be tied in with these, um, energy flares coming from the sun and the Aurora Borealis. I'm not sure, but Hey Jane, but this is something that, Hey there, um, Sarah, this is something that I feel is important that there is this, um, some will feel like a Phoenix is, is kind of coming up and rising. Some will feel like they just need to kind of hang back and observe. Some people are going to be um, really focusing on the ideas of alchemy and changing one structure into another. You know, we always talk about changing lead into gold. Um, which is one form of alchemy, but there's spiritual alchemy. You know, um, the best way to describe it is if you have, you know, somebody that potentially might be in a bad mood um, and, you know, sometimes you really have to work at changing that mood in order to be able to, to move forward with things. And to some degree, it's using alchemy um, to do that. So the people who are in tune, people who are magical are going to find themselves really needing to, um, tap into, I guess you could say their, their alchemist, um, side of themselves and, um, work with, uh, transmuting this energy, um, so that way they are able to allow um, themselves to move forward, to um, create stability, to create the groundedness and the um, energy that you need. So again, don't allow yourself to be baited into a knee-jerk reaction. Um, if you feel like it's not right for you, if you feel like it's not in your highest and best, don't do it, walk away, you know? And discernment is going to be really, really important, especially with this um, 1031 portal, okay? Um, 
The other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is the fact that we also have two moons for the next two months. Um, so we have the regular moon, but then we also have this other moon that's kind of going around the um, the planet for two months because it got pulled into the Earth's um, gravitational pull. And it's actually um, something that is tied in with the uh, um, one of the asteroid belts. So um, it's not going to be visible to the naked eye. But it's adding in extra energy. And again, if you are somebody that is very in tune with things, um, then you may find that you do feel it. You may find that it is um, kind of creating an extra energy layer that's kind of maybe throwing you off your game. So again, the need to really make sure that you're you're handling this well. Um, Don't allow yourself to, like I said, don't allow yourself to fall into traps that I don't want to say are being laid out for us, but traps that energetically speaking, as someone who is a practitioner, someone who is energetically um, um, a higher vibration, um, you know, there's, there's, there's just so much coming in. So, um, make sure you spend this time to really take care of yourself. Ultimately, take care, take time to take care of yourself. So um, that's kind of it for, for here on the Facebook side. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, finish up on the Zoom. So that way we can uh, get it up to YouTube. So if you are going to watch this in its entirety, watch it on YouTube under Tori McNally. That will, it will be up tomorrow. Okay. Um, what else? Um, check our events on um, Eventbrite. Um, we have the um, origin of Halloween, origins of Halloween coming up on the 16th, which is a free class on Zoom. We have table tipping tomorrow night and there's still seats available. We have the Victorian tea and table on the 25th. We have, what else? Dear God, there's a lot going on. Um, Cindy's Violet Flame Healing. That would be great. You know, people who are definitely intuitive and in tune. Um, that's a great way of bringing in the healing and the grounding that you need, especially, and the transmutation. You know, Violet Flame is, is all about St. Germain, is all about transmutation and alchemy. Um, so the energy vibration of St. Germain is very close to the energy vibration of Merlin the Magician. So that is something that maybe you explore. And that potentially is also where this, this Phoenix is coming in. So that's really where I'm seeing that. Um, what else? Um, we've got some cool things coming up again this Sunday um, from at two o'clock. We are teaching on Zoom, uh, Muhammad, who is a dear friend of mine. Um, he's an Egyptologist in based in Luxor, Egypt. Um, he is coming uh, in to our Zoom to talk about essential oils and incense of ancient Egypt. So we are going to be talking about um, um, the fundamentals of that. And then we have something really exciting coming up for November. I am so excited. I'm not going to lie. I am really excited about this. And if you are somebody that is that is really um, into um, um, essential oils and um, herbal remedies and um, healing and things like that, then this may very well be something that would be really, really um, beneficial for you. Um, especially if you are really into the ancient Egyptian culture and the ancient Egyptian magical world. Okay. I'm not going to give it away on here. So you're going to have to wait until you see it on YouTube. So um, anyhow, have a fantastic evening. Hold on, you folks, but have a fantastic evening. And um, again, if you refer to people to us and they successfully book, or attend a class or what have you, you are going to get a free reading or 
um, energy healing. So keep that in the back of your mind. Do something for yourself. So, all right, take care. Bye. Hold on. All right, so I want to do this. And I want to do this. And I want to post that. All right. So where are we with this? I wanted to talk a little bit more in particular about the energies. The energy that I just talked about is kind of like the tip of the iceberg. Um, as healers, as spiritual people, you're going to find that there's a lot of people who may not necessarily be able to either handle this energy vibration handle this energy signature and um for whatever reason come to you to potentially help them all right so this is something that as a healer this is something as um, a teacher or as a practitioner you're definitely going to want to really focus on during this time especially through october honestly through the end of the year all right um, honestly, through the end of the year. And I know that I've done readings before. I do have some other cards that I, I actually have here with me that I want us to kind of take a look at and see um, what we can expect because I feel like we need to kind of be aware and try and stay one step ahead of a lot of this stuff. You know, um, some of the energy that's going to be coming in, especially with this Halloween portal, does feel um like it does not necessarily have our best interest I'm just gonna say that so this is where you're really gonna have to be really key and on top of things with your discernment so let's see we have i'm gonna do three for october i'm gonna do three for november And I'm going to do three for December. Let's see what we got. My nose is really itchy. So that usually means that spirit is doing something funky. All right. Let's see. I'm just going to put that over here. And pray I don't knock it over. So um, October... Um, it's interesting because we got the Ascended Masters card and it's a focus on devoted spirits with specific intentions. Okay. Devoted spirits with um, specific intentions. And as you know, on the spirit world, it can either be bad or it can be good. So again, this is where the discernment is going to really come into play, especially for October. Okay. We also have your eternal spirit and higher self and sacred initiation or intuition rather. And to me, this is, you're going to have to up your protection. All right. You're going to have to up your protection and you're going to have to really work on expanding your bandwidth to really be able to um, hold and handle um, this energy. And allowing yourself to stay grounded again don't allow yourself to get caught up in the noise don't allow yourself to get caught up in the distractions um keep moving forward you you do have it says community or your group talking about kinship so what i'm going to say with this is if you have a, um a connection with a group um of like-minded individuals you know, maybe it's one of those things, especially for October, you try and do a little bit more with with that um, to give yourself the opportunity to kind of move forward together and to also um, strengthen yourself and be more in the flow of things, um, especially for October. Okay, 
So again, ascended masters, devoted spirit with specific intentions. Could also very well be that with some of this energy coming in, there's a leveling up for you, which you know is fantastic. But again, we have to be careful. We have to be on top of things. We have to be aware. And we have to make sure that we are doing things in the right order and giving ourselves time to integrate. All right. So keep that in mind. So that's October. Let's take a look at November. Interesting. So for November, we got past life guides. So to me, this is all about ancestral energy. And the first of November, as you know, is always um, All Saints Day where we are literally honoring our ancestors, right? Karmic lessons, present assistance. So for November, to me, this is all about connecting with your ancestors. It's also about, you may find that you are um, learning that this particular lifetime um, you might understand a little bit more about the karmic lessons as to what's going on in this lifetime or, or why certain things are happening, um, in order to kind of get a full view of, of what's going on soul wise. Okay. Soul wise November, as we know, is all about gratitude. It's also kicking off the holiday season. Um, but I like the fact that it starts off by kicking things off with All Souls Day or All Saints Day. Okay. Um, if you've never had a past life regression, this is a great opportunity. November, past life regression um, will give you an opportunity to kind of get an idea of maybe some of the things that have happened in your past that kind of make sense with what's going on in your life now. Um it might also give you an opportunity to kind of understand why maybe we are the way we are from different past life experiences, maybe why we have certain wounds or certain fears or phobias that um, we have that technically might be tied into the past. Um, it also gives us the opportunity to understand that sometimes some of the karma that we're dealing with in our current lives might very well be stuff that is karmic from our ancestral line. Sometimes it's something we need to break. Sometimes it's something that we need to create. That's something that we need to, to figure out on a soul level. So this is, I think, really, really interesting and telling. Um, the other thing that comes up is prophets and ancient seers, decisions, predictive guidance. Uh, again, with the fact that November, October rather, is all about potentially leveling up and doing your work and really staying within the framework and um, expanding your bandwidth and expanding your protection, this makes a lot of sense, especially if ancestral energy is coming in and we have these new skills that are starting to integrate. Okay, we have these skills that are starting to integrate. And you know, I always tell people that if they're learning something, that's great. But you don't want to go from one thing to another, to another, to another, because you're not giving yourself the proper time and the energy and for that, for the lack of a better word, the bandwidth again, to allow that stuff to settle in and see how to work with it. So that's something that you may find. There may be some new skills that you might find that spirit gives you to work with that are going to be um, what you focus on in the next couple of months or even in the in the dark half of the year. Um, but it, it's going to come about in a way that needs to be meaningful. It also is going to come about in a way where um, it's going to unfold organically. And um, you're going to need to use your judgment. And then finally, we have personal guide, guardian angel, spirit family. Again, to me, this also ties a little bit in with the um, past life guides. The personal guide is really connecting with your guides. You may find that there's a new guide that comes in. You may find that you have all of a sudden just learned how to connect with your guide, especially if you're in the process of opening up. 
um, or you're undergoing an awakening, so to speak. You know, these are things to kind of think about that you really want to you really want to focus on um, for us to be able to connect with guides, for us to be able to work with these gifts or these these new opportunities that are coming in. We got to do the work. We got to, you know, do certain things in order to um, be able to safely and effectively bring in this energy that we want to to connect with that we know we need to work with okay so guardian angels spirit family that's going to be something that's important and again in november the free class in november is the guided meditation that focuses on gratitude the angels and manifesting so that might be a really great opportunity to connect with that and then finally, December. December, let me take a look. Okay, so December is kind of interesting. We have goddess of dreams, vision, intuition, and receptivity. So uh, again, this may very well continue to, to grow and peak in terms of of what's coming in for you. And you may find that this particular upgrade might take longer than some of the previous ones. Um, and you might find that certain things kind of kick in along the way. So keep that in mind, all right? You may find that there's a lot of, with some of the energies that are coming into the planet, and I definitely feel like there's gonna be more with the solar flares. I feel like there's gonna be more with the portals. There's gonna be more with energies that are coming into the earth, both that are positive as well as negative. So I feel like there's going to be a need to really fine tune your intuition um, in order to allow yourself to tap into the right frequency. Okay. So um, dreams, uh, visitations, um, those are, I think are going to be big. Um, you know, I think we're going to have a large, I hate to say this, but I have to say this. I think um, the end of December, I should say 12-12. I should say 12-24, 12-25, 12-31, and 1-1 are all going to be very big portal dates. And I feel like there's going to be a lot that comes in as well as goes out. What do I mean by that? I feel like there's going to be a lot of energy that comes in as well as a lot of energy going out. When I say energy going out, I mean connections to um, the cosmos. I mean connections to um, the different planes and the different um, dimensions, okay? I do also feel like there are going to be a fair number of souls that potentially are going to be leaving. And I hate to say that, but I do feel like there are going to be a fair number of souls who are going to be departing. And I feel like those particular dates, 12-12, um, um, what did I say? 12-12, 12-21, 12-25, 12-31, 12, uh, and that's a very special portal. Um, 1231 and 11 one are going to be um, moments where you find that there are going to be individuals that are going to be leaving. I feel like it's going to be one of those things where it, it's just tied into their soul family. It's tied into their, their soul contract. And there's really no way around it. Um, some of it may very well be that they're kind of getting off the exit ramp um, because they see an opportunity. It could very well be that some of this has been predetermined. So just just know that um, and just be aware of that. Um, but again, the, the, the uh, lucid dreaming is going to be big. Um, the intuition, I think, is going to be really, really big. And also... Um, I think like there's going to be a connection with um, higher self. And I also feel like there's going to be a connection with 
also connecting with the divine, connecting with the cosmos, etc. So those are some things that you're going to experience potentially in um, in December. Um, we have some things that are showing up here. First one that I want to talk about, though, for December is Archangel Raguel, who is all about justice, harmony, and solutions. So let me just see what exactly that means. All right. So he heralds in good news. He's the angel of justice. In harmony, he brings fairness and compassion to difficult situations and relationships with others. A person, a personal or work conflict will be clearing up soon. Perhaps someone has been annoying or agitating to you, even hurtful or hostile situations will be on the mend. Some difficulties may have been an undercurrent of your life for a long time creating a deep sense of injustice in you. If so, now is the time to change things and to speak your truth and to make reasonable and honorable requests. Your soul longs for you to heal in your relationships with yourself and others, and Raguel is here to help. Whether it's your spouse, your boss, a coworker, or a friend, this card is telling you that you do have the power to heal the energy of the relationship. Raguel blesses your intuition or your intention to live in true harmony. Um, so with Raguel, he has the scales, again, the scales of justice. And, you know, sometimes people, when they see the, the justice card in tarot, um, it could even very well be Raguel that's sitting there in the chair, because I know the justice card did come up a couple of times. Um, it's also the reminder to stay in balance. Um, it's also the reminder to make sure that, you know, there is there is fairness um, and there's a need for harmony. Um, and the I think one of the reasons as to why that's coming up is because one of the other cards that's popping up is phase entanglement and then emotional influence. Phase entanglement and emotional influence. So... What I'm going to say is don't allow yourself to get caught in drama. That's not yours. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in situations that are not yours to defend or push forward. Um, also, you may find that there are people, especially in December, who, for whatever reason, transfer maybe some of their, I don't want to say negativeness, but I'm going to say unhappiness or some of their beliefs um, of, of different things, of, of how things are done, of how things are. And sometimes um, people will transfer these emotions um, for whatever reason onto other people. So don't get caught up in that emotional transference is what I'm trying to say, all right? Um, many emotions can be transferred to you in the daily life through phase, uh, uh, through phase entanglement, which indicates a matching of vibrations. This card reveals the potential for the phenomenon to exert a negative energetic influence in your life at this time. Whether you're around happy or unhappy people, you can carry their vibration when you leave their presence. And there may be someone in your environment who is anxious, depressed, critical, or pessimistic. And when you leave, you bring that negative, negative energy home with you. This is a natural reaction, but this card is telling you to reduce your exposure to the people as much as possible. It's difficult enough to keep yourself optimistic without the energy, without the energetic vampires, um, making it even more so. So set boundaries, ask the angels to surround you and um, counter the negative energy with positive and hopeful statements. So it's your life. Choose to spend your time with joyous, supportive people. So um, 
It could also very well be tied in with, like we said, we know that there's going to be a lot of energy coming into the planet. We know that there's going to be a lot of energy going out of the planet. We know that there's the possibility of um, people leaving the planet. So it could very well be tied in with some of those things, with some of these entanglements. Um, the point is, stick to your guns. Keep your eye on the on the on the on the horizon, and don't allow yourself to fall into some of these traps. Um, again, it's noise. And sometimes it's noise that's meant to dr try and drag us in. Sometimes it's noise that we just kind of fall into. All right. So you're going to really need to take care of yourself. Um, I feel over these next three months. So October, November, and December, you're going to really need to do a lot of self-care. You're going to need to do a lot of spiritual hygiene, spiritual care. And you're going to need to really be very um, uh, aware of who and what you're connecting to, as well as um, understanding that um, there are people that are here to assist you. There are people that are here to kind of help you through this process. So you do have a community. Don't be afraid to use it. Um, we are going to really need to focus, like I said, on gratitude and um, shifting a change, especially in November, um, as well as um, understanding about what our gifts are, understanding about what is coming in that we are going to be able to work with and how we're going to work with it. Allowing ourselves the time to integrate so we're able to work with it even more. Um, more, I feel, is going to make sense as we continue to get through these uh, months and these portals. So for November, uh, October, let's face it, 1010 is a portal. Um, 1031 is a portal. Um, what else? Um, uh, um, well, 11-1 is a portal, especially for ancestral work. Um, we have 11-11. That's a portal. Um, what else? We have 12-12, like I said. Um, 12-21. Um, 12-24. 12-25. 12-31. 1-1. One, one. So there's a lot that I feel that as spiritual people, we need to kind of keep in mind for these next three, especially these th next three months, because I feel like there's so much going on in the world. Um, the world needs our help. Um, may very well be that there's a need to um, bring people together to kind of help lend our energy uh, out to the world to try and, and help um, soften some of this stuff that um, potentially is coming in. It can be done. Uh, it's just one of those things where you kind of have to um, trust and and um, give yourself the time and, and the opportunity and the energy to do it. All right. So I hope this helps. I, I feel like this is something that's going to be quite critical. Um, so I also wanted just to quickly mention that in November, I want to say it's actually going to be November 3rd, the um, workshop class that Muhammad and I are going to be doing is going to be a practical workshop class on um, uh, essential oils. Um, let's see if I can find the title. Cause I gotta write it up. Uh, 
ancient Egyptian herbalism workshop making sacred oils. So um, it's going to be $66. And it's going to be a focus on the healing arts. It's going to be a focus on the essential oils in particular. And it's also going to include if you are someone that is an herbalist or training to be an herbalist or really involved in working and making um, essential oils and different blends, then this is going to be something that I think you're going to find really, really helpful because we are going to be working with and looking at and having the recipes of these ancient essential oils and combinations that would have been used by the healing priests and priestesses um, that would have been used in the different temples that would have been used um, in the funerary practices um, that would have been used um, throughout all of upper and lower Egypt. So this is something that I, I know Muhammad is very passionate about. This is something that I am very passionate about because there's probably going to be some more stuff coming out that's going to be tied into um, essential oils um, in the near future. So I hope that that is something that is um, a good carrot for people to, to kind of um, come back and check us out. Um, I am going to ask that if you um, have taken a class or had a reading or what have you with us or done an event um, to please, um, if you would be kind enough to um, give us a rating on um, Eventbrite. Um, that helps us, that helps our algorithm and um, it helps us be able to help more people. So if you would be willing to do that, we would really appreciate that. Um, if um, you are able to leave us a, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A testimonial on Facebook, on our Facebook page, on the Avalon Enchanted Facebook page, that would be really helpful too. You know, our success happens when we are helping each other. And so, um, we find it really important to be available to help people, to help people that might be opening up, to help people that might be um, exploring their path, to help people that might be um, finding new ways or finding new trails on their path. Um, and we enjoy doing it. We get a lot of not only satisfaction from the help and the work that we do, but um, it also helps us um, spiritually as well. You know, like I said, it's all about it's all about gratitude. It's all about being in it together. It's all about um, you know whatever you put out there comes back to you. So again, if you would be kind enough to please um, do a um, testimonial or re review um, on our. Eventbrite page, that would be really helpful. If you're able to do it on our Facebook page on Avalon Enchanted, that would be really helpful. Um, even on our YouTube page, like and follow and share our YouTube page. That is really helpful as well, because the more that we, the more exposure that we get, then, you know, that's going to be able to help us help more people. And that's really what it's all about. So I hope you have a great evening or whatever, or day or whenever you're watching this. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Cindy, whether it be through Eventbrite, whether it be through YouTube or um, Facebook or Instagram. Our Facebook is Avalon Enchanted. Instagram is Avalon underscore Enchanted. My Facebook page is Tori McNally. Um, our website, you can reach us at toriaavalonenchanted.com. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So if, if there's anything that we can do to assist you, or if you're ready to start your journey, 
let us know. And we are happy and we'd be honored to assist you with that. Um, we do a lot of work that we can customize for you and what it is that you are looking to um, develop. And uh, we look to try and develop the best out of you to help you with your path. So whether it be Egyptian magic, whether it be you're just starting your journey, whether it be um, an Avalonian path, working with Merlin and working with um, the five sacred goddesses of, of Wales. We have a lot of interesting things that we can definitely work with. And we are excited and happy to assist you with that. So take care. And don't forget to like and share our, our information. Okay, thanks. Bye.